So medical examinations, x-rays and laboratory services, and insulin treatments uh, your doctor ordered. So those are some other things that could be included. Diagnostic tests, such as a full body, full body jukebox slam, body scan, pregnancy test, or blood sugar test kit. Nursing help, including your share of the employment taxes paid. If you paid someone to do both nursing and housework, you can deduct only the cost of the nursing help. So now you've got someone that you're paying for medical care and whatnot, but they might be doing multiple things. So now you've got to parse up what they're doing between the nursing and other stuff. Hospital care, including meals and lodging, clinic costs and lab fees, qualified long-term care services. You can see publication 502 for more detail there. A weight loss program as treatment for a, a specific disease, including obesity diagnosed by a doctor. This is another one that's kind of controversial because now you're talking about, well, you can get into the realm of dieting. And if you get into the realm of dieting, you can start to say, well, can't I deduct the food I eat <laughs> or something like that? So you can see it gets kind of a kind of a, a, a messy area. And the, and the idea of, of saying that uh, overweightness is a disease again, forces it's almost a political categorization as to when they, categorize something as a disease or not because then that tight that classification ties to things like the tax code and other kind of benefits so that kind of influences when they call something whether it's a disease or not so, which is another debatable area medical treatment at a at a center for drug or alcohol addiction medical aids such as eyeglasses contact lenses hearing aids braces crutches wheelchairs and guide dogs including the cost of maintaining them so some of these things can get quite expensive, like like uh, wheelchairs or like some like a like a lift that carries you up the the stairs or that kind of stuff can can be quite expensive. And if there's a big cost of, on something like that, then that could be in and of itself something that pushes someone over from standard deduction to itemizing. Surgery to improve uh, defective vision, such as laser eye surgery or radio uh, keratotomy. I'm not sure exactly what that is. I know what laser eye surgery is. I probably need it. Uh, lodging expenses, but not meals while away from home to receive medical care provided by a physician in a hospital or medical care facility related to a hospital provided there was no significant uh, element of personal pleasure, react, uh, recreation or vacation in the travel. So now you had to travel somewhere for medical purposes so if it's not a vacation, you didn't go to Disneyland across the street or something like that, then you may be able to deduct the travel expenses. Don't deduct more than $50 a night for each person who meets the requirement of publication 502 under lodging. Fairly low limit right there. So ambulance service and other travel costs to get medical care. So obviously an ambulance can be quite uh, expensive. If you used your own car, you can include what you spent for gas and oil to go to and from the place you received the care, or you can include 18 cents a mile for January 1st through June 30th and 22 cents a mile from July 1st through December 31st. Now note that those mileage rates are different oftentimes than the business mileage rates. So you might think I know what the mileage rates are, but they could be different depending on what they're being applied to, where they're being applied in this case, the schedule A medical expenses as opposed to schedule C for the for the mileage rates. Add parking and tolls to the amount you claim under uh, under either method. Cost of breast pumps and supplies that assist lactation, uh, personal protection, I'm assuming you can only add those costs if you're lactating for, you know, feeding a child or if you're just lactating for no, I don't know. Personal protective equipment such as masks, hand sanitizer, and sanitizing wipes for the primary purpose of preventing the spread of coronavirus. So obviously they kind of tacked that one on in recent uh, years. So then limit on long-term care premiums you can include. So the amount you can include for qualified long-term care insurance contracts. So remember when we're talking about insurance, You've got insurance for normal insurance and then the long-term care is the insurance for if you end up in a situation where you have to have just complete care like all the time uh, and that's the insurance you're paying so they're kind of two different categories of insurance 
So as defined in publication 502 depends on the age at the end of 2022 of the person for whom the premiums were paid. See the following chart for details. So if the person was at the end of 2022, age 40, 41 to 50 and so on, then the most you can include are the table on down below. 